awesome things. Um, we, we at the education team at the foundation saw it and said, that's really awesome. We want it to work for all of you in every language, every wiki, across projects, across languages. Um, so that was the main goal. Uh, and working in collaboration with Wikied, Sage is here, we've made a lot of progress. Um, so I'm going to, so this is the Wikied dashboard. Um, it's for the US and Canada program. I'm going to go to outreach dashboard.wmflabs.org. The link is in the etherpad. So this is currently where our, I think we're calling it an alpha, right? Yeah, our, our alpha version yes. lives. Um, we hope to make it up to beta and have a more wide release of it. Um, so you guys are perhaps early adopters or early testers, so we wanted to share it with you and, uh, and also get some feedback. Um, not necessarily right now, but in the next few months. So, so, we, so the, uh, if we can't see there, the URL that we should put is this www.wikimedia.org uh, uh, yeah. slash outreach. So, um, yeah, no, so the, the links in this, this is a, just a notepad, okay. but the link's posted here. Um, I can write them. Can you see uh, on, on here? Yeah, here? Can you uh, see here? Uh, right, I can write it up on the board. Oh, here's chalk. Okay, cool. Yeah, and uh, outreach dashboard. Oh, okay. It, it, the link is right down, down there. So oh. Outreach dashboard. Outreach dashboard. Wmf. This one. Apps. Dot org. Uppercase, lowercase, it all goes to the same place as far as I know. You can click on it. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, the basic idea is that it's a place, we're calling it the Programs and Events Dashboard because we want it to be as widely applicable as possible. Um, it started in an education context for the Wikied Foundation, so we, you were, we were creating courses and monitoring students. In this version, we broadened it so that you could use it in an edit-a-thon, a writing contest, perhaps even wiki labs, although that might be pushing the boundaries, um, and, and in education courses. So um, any program and or event. Um, and so this, sorry, I'm not sure what you can see. So, but here, I'm gonna log you out, Liang. Yes. Um, oh, it's not. So here's the, the, da the landing page. You would log in with your Wikimedia account through OAuth. Sorry, I think the, the the display has some issues. Okay. Uh, does this? I think the display is okay. It's it's okay. It was okay. Yeah. Because I think some something was missing. If you just kill the lights, I think it would be better. I mean, turn turn off the curtain. Well, we don't we don't have too much time, so I'm just gonna keep yeah. moving. Because so, we don't want to keep you too long. And I would just encourage you to go to the links and play around. So I'm just going to do a very quick guided play, basically, and I want you guys to look at it as well. So you will log in with your Wikimedia account. Yes. Um, when you log in, uh, also on the landing page, which is really which is new to, to the, me this week, maybe last week, you can also change the language interface. That will only work if the messages are translated. So on the etherpad, I also left the link to where you can translate messages into whatever language. Um, so we want the interface to be available to you in your language. I'll log in with Wikipedia. Oh no, I don't know my password. Oh, it's going to log in. Oh, you, you're gonna log in with mine. Okay, I sh maybe I shouldn't have logged you out. Okay, so here you would, here, uh, Liang's created a test project already. We'll create a new one. So you would create a new program. Um, since he already has a previous course, he can start cloning it. So if you're doing a course each semester or multiple versions of the same course, the idea is that it'll be quick to create copies. We'll create a new program. Um, you would enter basic information like uh, US. Um, Wikimania test run 2016 for the course, institution, Esinolario. You can choose your home wiki. 
uh, our home language. So just the two letter code. We can, we're in Casino, so let's do Italian. Um, you can choose your home projects. Defaults to Wikipedia. Um, you can add a description here. You can also modify the description later with information about the edit-a-thon. You can link to things that are useful. You can have your grading criteria there. It can be a reference page for your, anyone in your, a student in your class or participant in your edit-a-thon. Um, and then you need a start and an end date. And then you create it. So we'll start it and we'll end it end of June. Everything should be editable. So I just created it for the, I keep looking behind me, so here. <laughs> I just created it for the month of June. Um, here I can go to the details and edit details. So I can um, add online volunteers, <laughs> campus volunteers. I can change the dates here. So they should be editable. If you run into a bug, let us know. Um, and you can edit the description as well. So you can add to it, you can change it. Uh, updated description. Maybe you can briefly explain the zeros there? So at the top, we don't have any students or articles, so there's no metrics to pull right now. Um, if we were in an active course, it would tell you, um, so we have articles created, articles edited, total edits, total editors, words, words added, and article views. So you have, just right at the, this is why it's the dashboard. So from first glance, you have your top-level metrics. And those are automatically pulled based on the criteria. So if you say June 1st to June 30th, it's going to look at the edits in that time window for the, this, the editors in your cohort. And um, so may I ask a question? Yeah. Um, in order to get the audience numbers, uh, I, uh, I get to put the user names of the editors who will participate in this program. Yeah, so I don't know if you can see, where, but the green yes. box here gives you a link. So this link you could share out with your your users. So it's your students or your edit-a-thon participants, and it would register them. Um, they'd have to log in with their accounts. If they don't have an account, they would have to create an account. So it can be a nice first step so everyone shows up with an account, which can save a lot of time. Um, you can also manually add, add them. So if you go to the editors tab, um, you can add under if you click on participation, you can add usernames manually. So I can uh, add my personal username here. It asks you if you're sure. And there, so I'm I'm now enrolled in this course. By default, a course will have like a token, so or a password basically, so that um, you can change the token and you can share the token. But just to keep uh, some registration to the people you want registered for the course. I don't know, Sage. Yeah, there, yeah. anyone can can view. Like anyone can go to the link, can see. So what is assigned to other students? So I'm in the Explore tab, and I I can see. So the students can see what is assigned to other students. Yeah. So. I clicked on the Explore tab up here. It shows all the programs that are in the Outreach Dashboard right now. So I can go to one that has um, actual people registered. I can see, I can read the basics. I can see who, who is the user. I can um, look at their users, who's, who's doing what, see if they're, what the articles they're editing. So that is all public. I can't add a user because I'm not in charge of that program. But So there are permissions that are, you have admin rights on your program, but you can't modify other people's programs. Are there special kinds of permissions, or is there only one for the manager of the program? I don't know much about the permissions. So um, whoever creates a program is automatically signed up as one of the facilitators. They can add other facilitators, and then after that, remove themselves if they want. Um, there is also um, like a, an admin permission, but it's, it's not really necessary, and that would probably just be for people to clean up and remove programs that are just taking up the page. Um, and so the, the coolest thing um, 
is the fact that you can add an article from any language in any wiki and have, so you can have people at your edit-a-thon be editing in 10 languages and they're all on the same list. Before, if you ever used the education extension, it was installed on the wiki and it could only pull from that wiki. So it could pull from English Wikipedia, but not Italian Wikipedia. Here you can pull from English Wikipedia, Italian Wikipedia, German Wiktionary. So you can pull from multi-project and multilingual in the same list. Um, which is really cool. Yeah. First, can I divide the data about articles standard and articles greater by the school? Um, I don't know. Um, no, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't separate um, like the size of those. You can see how many articles were created and how many overall were edited. Um, but it doesn't break things down any more specifically than that. But there are specific numbers for articles created? Yes. Yeah, yes. I can so see that. Yeah. 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 yeah, and, and it will be easy to um, expand the kinds of metrics that come out of this um, once we have a clearer idea of how people want to use this. That, that will kind of be an easy part of it. Okay, metrics special. Even if I just like add a few words, not necessarily. I don't necessarily have to like, uh, like long text. Yeah, it doesn't matter the size of the edit. It will exactly. it'll measure activity. So if there's any activity, it also back on the overview it give it reports words added. So for um, and to, we probably will need to change that at least for now to bytes added right. because I. That was designed around English Wikipedia and right. sort of just an assumption and an average number of bytes per word. But right. that doesn't make any sense right. um, in some languages. So, so even like, though bytes is not very user friendly and like words is actually how you want to make sense of how much content is created, um, that's a little trickier. Yeah, so like for Hebrew, it's two bytes per character. For English, Latin script is one byte per character. and then so. And if you're doing multiple languages, it gets complex. So. Just one question. Uh, I think in the traditional dashboard, the one that is now going to be, this going to be used in other places, not the US, uh, I think you are going to do the count by words and characters. Are you going to change just their work, not only here? We need to figure out that out. So maybe we need to have get some solicit feedback, feedback, have a discussion, because. We, the wikis measure everything in bytes. Bytes mean nothing. So the WikiEd Foundation converted the, that into like an average. Bytes in English Wikipedia equals approximately this many words. And so they reported out words. Um, when we were, like from my perspective, I've worked with Arabic and English. And in order to make them comparable, we usually divided Arabic in half because it's a complex script. But even then, we're, it's approximating how many characters are in a word. And it's we, we we don't count words on on in our edit histories. So it's, it's at a certain point it's contextualizing the byte number into something that's actually meaningful, um, and a lot of it's estimation. But when you're dealing with different languages, an average word length may be different too. Um, yeah. So I think a lot of people want to see that, and um, it will take some more work to put that into a state where it could be localized. Because that's going to be a situation where it, it can't be just translation. It needs to be a pretty easy for people to customize it to their own particular programs. And that's something that I think if enough people are starting to use this and, and have are interested in seeing it develop further and are asking for that, then it's more likely to happen. Um, but it's not going to be probably for at least six months, if not longer. Well, I guess I want that to happen. So I would like to see that request in the room. Because that would not quite be enough. So a bunch of tutorials is the need, is the need you have? No. The yeah, what, what do you call it? Like a walkthrough of editing. So Wiki has been doing a lot of like more modular training. 
Um, so basically, the wiki ed version of the dashboard has a lot more, um, a lot of usability that we basically just turned off in order to make the international stuff work for now. Um, and it's stuff that we could see how do we integrate back in. So they are doing stuff like plagiarism detection and ORES, or is that how we say it? I don't know how we actually say that out loud. O R E S. We say ORES. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's a pun on like the other service, Bart. Okay. Um, so it's a, it's a geology pun. Okay. Um, I've only seen it written, but so like looking so at. So mine the data from from the databases. Nice. I want to ask uh, if the, uh, this program is working uh, uh, in, the, in the past events. For example, last year I did some program uh, with uh, with Jim Werner to edit, and uh, there was uh, two months or something. So if I put the, the start date, 2015. End date, for example, June 2015, will it count? And eight it also. Yeah. And this is uh, uh, yes, we will start uh, this program. Or I have to start the program that I started the program. It, it's not designed to support that. Um, you could make it work, um, but it would kind of be tedious. You would have to first create it and start way back then. I have to go all the way up to now. So put the end date in the future, and then wait till it updates. Yes. And then after it updates, then you can set the end date back to the real one, and it will. Uh, but it might not even update then. So yeah, it, no, no, you can't. Done. No. <laughs> good, good question though. No time traveling. Thank you. <laughs> um, but basically, That's a good idea, though. <laughs> yeah, that was a good creative question. Um, so basically, uh, we, I'd encourage you to, to take a look. Um, if, if it's something you want to start using, uh, maybe see how if it's translated into your language, the interface. Um, maybe see if some of your community wants to help you translate it. Um, we, we are in alpha mode, so I, wouldn't, I would not recommend, if you're starting a like an edit-a-thon tomorrow, to using it only this for your edit-a-thon. Maybe use it as like a test and have a backup list of usernames and all that in case you need to run Wikimetrics still and this breaks. Um, but I would hope that by the fall we have something that we would we could confidently say you could use in your classrooms. Um, but so we're still in the, heading that direction. So when are we expecting the beta? Um, this fall. I don't I don't have a date for you. Um, fall meeting in October. Why is fall? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. No, I just meant that we're all these things different months. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't. But I, I honestly, northern hemisphere, <laughs> southern hemisphere. Yeah. No, no. You, you mean you mean North American fall? I'm yeah. basically I'm thinking of the next the academic semester that's starting in September through October, but I don't know that. I can't can't make any guarantees right now. That's what I want to see. Sounds like we're having a teaser of a certain movie. This <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Okay. Let me preface this by saying I'm not sure I'm confident to do any of the stuff I'm trying to do, but I tried uh -huh. to follow along and I did create, you know? Uh -huh. And then I got to the point where you get to choose your language. Well, what I would really like to be able to do there is choose a Q number from Wikidata. Uh -huh. like, yeah, okay, and get all the articles in maybe four or five languages, then away the ones that my students would be studying. Uh, available, accessible, automatically. So, like, if I type in uh, Q490, some, you know, choose Wikidata instead of choosing a language, and then type in Q490, and I see the article on Milan in English, Italian, French, etc., etc. Mm. Yeah, so I'm throwing that out there. Yeah. I mean, so, I don't one, know what I'm doing, but I'm yeah, that idea. So that's that's a more advanced idea than the what we have available. Um, currently, the feature we put in that's new is if you go to your article section in your program. You can put at the bottom available articles, and you can pre-populate <laughs> articles you want your cohort to focus on, perhaps. Right, but I have to do it like five times for five different uh, languages that are article on the same topic, right? Yes. There's no way for me to automatically capture that five languages. No. Okay. So, um, better to throw out this idea now than to complain about it that like six months. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say that unless I... Things that are said out loud are not captured on in writing 
uh, we, I want this captured in writing somewhere. So you can comment on MediaWiki. There's the, the, I'll put the link in the etherpad. Um, so there's mediawiki.org slash education extension slash dashboard or something. I'll put the link in the notes. And we have a, the discussion page there where you can add comments. We can, we'll probably direct feedback to that page as well. So that it's in one place and we can keep it somewhat organized. Um, but that's it. We're already over time. So. Uh, yeah, I can do 10 minutes or okay. maybe less. <laughs> if everyone is okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So very